pen here. This is electromagnetism, our practical demonstration at lesson number four. So what are the objectives of this particular lesson? So just let me get my pen on. Yes, it's uh, being a bit of a pain today. Okay, there we go, got it organized. So magnetism, one of the objectives, we're gonna look at the direction of motion between magnetic field and the conductor. What is the reluctance of a magnetic field? Does strength of a magnetic field make a significant difference? Uh, the number of turns cut by a magnet in a field, what effect does that have? The velocity of the conductor in a magnetic field and the angle at which the magnetic field cuts the conductors. So from our theory, all those things should have some kind of effect. Did a quick, um, Risk assessment, electric shock is going to be almost zero because we're only using voltages that will be induced in millivolts or even microvolts. Trips and falls, of course, always a hazard around my workshop. Keep the leads and things well up off the floors, benches clear, etc. So here's the circuit diagram. Basically, I've got two coils wound one on top of the other and I'm going to be using a couple of bar magnets which I can slide in and out of the magnetic fields and I've got coil one and coil two as I mentioned for the first set of experience, experiments I'm only going to use one of the coils and then I'm going to use the second coil so that's what this diagram shows you I'll then um, connect the coils together here effectively putting my two coils in series with each other so we should see a substantial change in our results here's the basic equipment that uh, we're playing with today so I've got a digital multimeter and again it's auto scaled um, but it'll be displaying in millivolts pretty well all the time I have my uh, little coil here which I've made up and it might be difficult to see but I've actually got a uh, center tap section here one end of my coil out here and the other end of my coil going up out here we have uh, two bar magnets that I've just taped together to make them easy to handle and then off to the side you can see this large rare earth button magnet so those are the bits and pieces we'll be using in our little prac so here's the prac um, we're looking at the relative movement between a magnet and a coil and the first thing we're doing is the magnet is stationary so if you uh, look in here at the moment I turn my pen on you can see I've just got my magnets sitting in the coil and there is nothing on the display so indication no polarity obviously nil value zero volts the next thing I do is I actually pull the magnet out and I just moderately to moderate speed push it slowly into the coil and you'll notice straight away we've had a result so we've now got 20 volts but take particular note of the sign it's a negative 20 so it's 0.0 so it's about 200 oh no it's close to 20 we'll call it 20 millivolts so we've got 20 millivolts got a thing yes it's negative and we've got 20 millivolts so that's our pole from the south put in slowly now we're going to take that same magnet and we're just going to pull it out at about the same speed that we put it in so this time we've retracted it and again you can see that we've got 
9 volts and you can see the polarity here they don't put up a plus sign they just put up a negative sign if it's negative therefore it's a positive 9 millivolts so I've got a response it's positive and it's 9 millivolts as well it's kind of what we would expect isn't it we get a negative voltage when we push the magnet in but we get a positive voltage when we pull it out because the magnetic field is moving in the opposite direction so now we're going to repeat the whole process again and you'll notice this time I've got the south ends of the magnets are pointing up which means the north end has gone in first so the north end the red end of the magnet has been plunged in first and we've got about 38 millivolts and again look at this it's plus they didn't put the plus symbol there but I will so it's positive and it's about 38 millivolts again it's what we would expect this time we are going to move it pull it out I'm going to pull the magnet out and you can see here here's my north poles have come out we've got 50 millivolts and there's a negative again what well, that was what was anticipated so we've got a negative here a negative so the next thing we do is we put in a stronger magnet and you can see here oh, all I've done is put the disc magnet on the top to improve the magnetic field and we've plunged that back in and we've got something about the same size I would have expected it we've maybe got a few extra milli bolts but um, as it turns out got about the same so stronger magnet and we get a positive reading just like we did up here with the north so the next one you can see I've moved the clips now on the coil and I'm now using the outsides of both so I've uh, increased my turns and as it turns out I've gone times two and this time I've got 120 millivolts and again it's in the positive direction because the north ends are being plunged into the field so I get a higher voltage and then finally I moved the magnet or I used the button magnet and I used it outside and moved the coil relative to the magnet still got a relative change in field and you can see on this particular occasion I got minus 17 which again you'd expect less because the angle that we were moving the flux across the field has changed considerably with the location of my button magnet and where the field goes in relationship to the button magnet so what, can, what are our observations first question we need to ask what is the effect of increasing the strength of the magnetic field so the reading was considerably higher so more flux higher voltage so more flux higher density we get more so on our increased magnet I didn't get a lot of increase but got a little bit of increase with our button magnet and increased our voltage up to about 42 instead of in the 20s what is the effect of increasing the number of turns well that was rather dramatic wasn't it we got um, we got 102 millivolts so the reading was much higher there's a clear relationship between the voltage and the number of turns the number of turns was doubled and the voltage literally doubled so originally we were getting something in the order of a 
about, uh, what was it, about 50 millivolts, maybe 42 millivolts, somewhere in that order. And we doubled the number of inductance coils and we pretty well, we've doubled the voltage. So clearly there is a, a direct and proportional relationship to the number of turns. Then uh, what is the effect of increasing the velocity and speed? So if we went slowly, you can see here we've got about 38 volts. If we went a bit faster, we got it up to about 45. So it was pretty hard actually to catch the difference, but eventually I got there. So slow movement. Unfortunately, it's hard to uh, predict the, you know, I couldn't measure how quickly I was moving the things. So we can say the effect of increasing the velocity or the speed, the voltage did increase a little with speed and the proportion is difficult to gauge. What is the effect of reversing the magnetic field? So if you remember, we had an example where we had a south being plunged in first and then a north being plunged in first. And clearly, you can see on the meter, we've got a minus when we were putting the south in first and we got a plus when we were putting the north in again. The meter doesn't actually say plus because it just assumes plus. So the voltage for the south direction was negative and for the north direction was positive. So the voltage induced is relative to the direction of the magnetic field. Next, what is the effect of the angle of magnetic field? Remember we put the button magnet here on the outside and moved the coil backwards and forwards under the button magnet. So with a much stronger magnet, the angle of much less than 90 degrees, the voltage is lower. So induced voltage is relatable to the angle of the field and how it cuts the conductor. So what we call the angle of incidence between the conductors and the magnetic field in relation to speed also play a significant role. So what can we summarize from our little experiments we've done? The first is we can summarize what the effects on the voltage and therefore the current induced by a magnetic field are. The strength of the magnet will have an effect. The number of turns of the conductors will have an effect. The speed at which the field cuts the conductors will affect. The direction of the magnetic field will have an effect. And again, the angle of incidence between the magnetic field and the conductors will have a dramatic effect on how much voltage is induced. So that brings us to the end of electromagnetism practical number four. Again, hopefully we verified some of the theory that we did both in the theory slides and in the exercise tutorial slides.